Hello class, welcome to lesson 6-8, which is all about solving systems of inequality. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to grasp systems of linear inequalities, and you should be able to solve systems of linear inequalities by graphing. So I'm just going to give you a quick little reminder of what graphing an inequality looks like. That's where we ended up having our dashed lines, and then we would shade, okay? So now, today, our goal is to take those different graphs and say, okay, where does our shading overlap? So see, if you look at this, where do I have both the blue and the orange? That's right here. So my green section, everything I'm shading green right now, is the solution for this inequality, okay? So that's what we're gonna practice today. So first we're gonna start by remembering what it's like to graph inequalities. So if we start with our letter A, we have y is less than or equal to negative three. Remember when you have a y and equals or an inequality symbol, that's a horizontal line. Okay, so I find where does y equal three? y equals three here, and I have Y is less than or equal to. That or equal to, remember, means it's a solid line. So I draw my arrow, and I look back, and I have to decide which side of the line I'm shading. Y is less than negative, or Y is less than or equal to 3. So that means I'm going to shade everything below this line that I just drew. Now, I have... A, x plus y is greater than 1. So there's a couple ways you can graph this. Remember, you can either graph it just like it is in standard form, or you can solve it for our slope-intercept form. Either way works. I'm going to graph it just how it is, but the x plus y is greater than or equal to 1. I know I'm going to have a dot at both 1 and 1. If I make y 0, I have x plus 0 is greater than 1, so I have to put the 1. Greater than or equal to, so that has to be 1. And same thing. Now I just have to connect those. It also is an or equal to, so that means it's going to be a solid line going down. Like that, sorry, that was a terrible arrow. And now instead of focusing on where these two lines intersect, remember, we have to test where this shades. So if I Try plugging in the origin, and I say 0 is greater than or equal to negative 0, that's just 0, plus 1. Is 0 greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1? No. So I look, I find my origin, I know that's not true, so I have to go to the other side of my orange line and shade the other part. Now, to finish it off, I look, where do I have my overlap of, sorry, I should have shaded that orange. Where do I have my overlap of the orange and purple? My overlap of orange and purple is all of this right here. Okay, so that is my solution. I highly recommend that when you're graphing these, you use multiple colors, whether that means highlighters, colored pencils, crayons, markers, whatever you need in order to be able to tell what parts have been shaded multiple times. If you don't have any um, color choices, shade one graph with lines going this way, shade another graph with lines going the opposite way, so that way when you have, when you see an overlap pattern like this, you know that is your solution. Okay, so I highly recommend that if you don't have the option of color. Let's try letter B. We have 2x plus y is greater than or equal to 2. So if I graph that, I know my x has to be at 1, my y is at 2, and I have an or equal to, that means I'm going to have a solid line going on. So I'm just going to 
connect to my breath with a solid line. Just like that. And now I have to figure out which side I am going to shave. So I have 2x plus y is greater than 2. So if I plug 0 in for x and y, if I plug 0, 0 in, test the origin, 2 times 0 is 0 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 2. Is that true? No. So I know I need to shade the opposite side of the line from the origin. Okay. Now let's try another line. We have 2x plus y is less than 4. So I know my x is going to be at 2. My y is going to be at 4. And it is less than. So there's no or equal to. That means I'm going to have a dashed line. Okay, so I'm going to draw a dashed line. Just like that. And now I have to figure out which part to shade. So I have 0 plus 0 is less than 4. Is that true? Yes, so that means everything on the side of the origin is going to be shaded. That means that the only place there's overlap between these two is a really narrow section between our two lines. That's the only place our purple and orange graphs are overlapping. Okay, so that would be my answer for letter B. Let's try another one. I know these can be kind of tedious and confusing. So we're going to do you know, four examples right away here. So again, letter C, I have a Y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So I look, where is Y equal to negative 4? And I draw a line right there. And it is greater than negative 4. That means it's going to be all of this area up here meets the criteria for my graph, okay? Now, let's graph the other one. We have 3x plus y is less than or equal to 2. So my x is going to be at 2 thirds, so that's going to be right about there, and y is going to be at 2. So what I need to do is draw a line between those two points, and since it's less than or equal to, that or equal to means we are going to have a solid line going and now I need to test my point to see which area to shade. So if I plug a zero, um, the origin in, zero, zero, I have three times zero plus zero is less than or equal to two. So 3 times 0 gives us 0. 0 plus 0 leaves us with 0 again. So 0 less than 2. Is that a true statement? It is. So I find my origin and I know that everything on that same side of the line is going to be part of the area I need to shade. So now I'm just shading that side of my graph. Now I have to pick a third color and figure out where do these two graphs overlap. So I look where do I have both of the colors. Hopefully you see the benefit of using two different color or three different colors. So that way it's easy to identify. I highly recommend doing that on the test. Okay, so there you go. That blue section is going to be the solution for this problem. Okay, let's move on to letter D. 
which is x plus y is less than 2, so I'm going to have x and y intercepts at 2, or x plus y is greater than 2, sorry, I think I said less than. So x plus y is greater than 2, there's no or equal to, so I know it's a dashed line that's going to continue. And then, let's plug in our origin, so 0 plus 0, is that greater than 2? No, so I go to the opposite side of the line from the origin, and I shade that. That way I know which solutions are true. And if you ever want to test something, you can pick, you can say, hey, let's pick a point in my shaded area. So if I pick this number right, or this point right here, that is the point 4, 1. If I plug that into my equation, so instead of x, I'm going to put 4 plus y, is that greater than 2? So 4 plus 1 is 5, greater than 2? Yes. We know that we shaded the correct part of our graph. Now let's graph the last one. We have negative 4x plus 2y equals 8. So x x-intercept is at negative 2, my y-intercept is at 4, and again there's no or equal to, so it's going to be dashed line connecting these. And now I need to test to see which side of the graph I need to shade. So if I plug in 0, 0, the only reason I choose 0, 0 is because 0 is typically an easy number to work with. The 0 times anything gives me 0, so I can make my x and y terms equal to 0. So is 0 less than 8? Yes. So I know the side with the origin on it, that needs to be shaded. Anything on that side needs to be shaded. all this over here. Okay. Finish it off by shading the area that is in common between the two graphs. So that's all of our area here. Okay. Hopefully this is starting to make sense for you. We're going to move on to another one. We're going to look at y is greater than 3. So I look, it's in, there's no or equal to, so it's going to be a dashed line. And it's y is greater than 3. So pretty easy to graph. I just find where does y equal 3. I draw my line. I shade my graph for where it's greater than 3. And I look where is y less than 1. y is less than 1, anywhere below that. So there's my two graphs. Continuing on, I always, my next step is always to shade the region that they have in common, the place where they're both shaded. But if you look at this graph, they don't touch. These two lines don't touch. When they don't touch like this, that doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means that your answer is no solution. If you end up with a system of inequalities where the shades or the shading part on the graphs don't overlap, that is called no solution. There's nothing in common between those two inequalities. Go ahead and try this one on your own. See how you do. Hopefully you ended up with graph D for your answer. Um, Go ahead and try another one. And then hopefully you said no solution or null. All right, let's take a look at example three, which is all about fundraising. The theater club is selling shirts. They only have enough supplies to print 120 shirts. They will sell sweatshirts for $22 and t-shirts for $15 with a goal of at least $2,000 in sales. First, we want to define the variables and write a system of inequalities to represent this situation. Okay, so we know that there are a total of 120 shirts. We're dealing with sweatshirts, 
Okay, I am just going to call those W. And then T-shirts, I'm going to call those T, okay? So we have sweatshirts and T-shirts. And they have enough to print 120 total. So if I do S, or sorry, not S, W plus T, I know that I, our club has enough for 120 shirts. So does that mean are there enough for 118? Yes, because that's less than the 120. But if I said, can we print 122? Hopefully you say no, because that's greater than the amount we are allowed. So I need the total number of items sold to be less than or equal to the 120 shirts that are available for printing. My next one, my next equation, we have the sweatshirts selling for $22. So I'm going to say 22W plus 15T. And then I have to figure out, I want to get at least $2,000 in sales. At least $2,000. So which way do I need to have my inequality symbol pointed? Well, <coughs> excuse me. If I want at least 2000 that means my sales have to be greater than 2000 right? Greater than or equal to the 2000 So I want my sales to be greater than the 2000 They have to be at least 2000 Okay, so that's what I would write for my system of inequalities. Then I would go and I would practice graphing. Um, just to save time, I already have it graphed for you, and it shows you the overlap. And then continuing on, if I ask you to name a possible solution, all you have to do, look for the shaded region, find a point in the shaded region, and that's going to be a solution. So the point I just made is at 90 sweatshirts. So 90 sweatshirts and 20 t-shirts. And I put them in that order because it's the X and Y axis. So 90 sweatshirts and 20 t-shirts. That is a possible solution. But what about letter D? Is 45, 30 a solution? So if I go out to 45 and I go up to 30, is that a solution? No, because it is not in the shaded area. And that's how I'd answer that. All right, I have two more problems for you to try on your own. Here's the first one. Hopefully you decided graph A was the one that looked the best. Maybe it was a little hard to see. I understand it's a little small. Um, but go ahead and try letter, or sorry, the next example on your own. Hopefully you realize that one possible solution could be 17, 125. If you have any questions on this example or previous examples, please be sure to let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. Have a great day.